Did you know that there are free AI tools that might be better suited for your literature review than ChatGPT? One of you recommended it in one of my recent videos and I decided to give it a try and I'm so glad I did because it's an amazing tool. In this video, I'll break down how to use Notebook LM to make your literature review effortless. We'll explore its features step by step, we'll give it a try and we'll also compare it with ChatGPT. And finally, I will also share some prompting techniques and prompting tips so that you get the best output possible. Before we start, a quick introduction. If you don't know me yet, hi, my name is Aynur. I'm a third year PhD student at Imperial College London in chemical engineering. And I made it my mission to teach you every secret I know in academia, video by video through all my social media channels. So let's dive right into the video and explore the features of Notebook LM. And for that, I'm gonna grab my laptop as well and uh, open it up here. So we're gonna go first down to notebooklm.google as you can see here on the screen and then you're going to click on try notebook lm it's entirely free so no costs included and you can see i already tried it like excessive excessively i have lots of stuff here but let's create a new notebook so we're going to click on create new now the cool thing is on the left side you can see create add sources okay so let's click to add sources and choose some files now i have like an extent i'm a third year phd student okay so by now i have like so many literature articles saved in all kinds of different folders so let's go to my literature file um, sorting system here uh, experiments plunging jets okay this one here there is lots of paper in here and let's mark down just randomly these things okay these are the papers that I selected and I'm gonna click on open. And you can also upload like any lecture audio or a YouTube video. You can upload like links and stuff as well. So it's not only limited to PDF, but I'm gonna go with PDF now because that's the main source that we have when we analyze papers, right? So let's, up, let's give it a little bit of time to load. And then we're gonna look what we can do with it, okay? It's 12 sources. And first of all, it created a summary here, which is cool. That's nice. And um, what it does it, and that's amazing, it creates cross paper connections. So it connects all the papers that you uploaded. You can ask it like for similarities, for diversions, for it's amazing for to find like literature gaps, right? Uh, because you can ask and get answers and it will like combine and differentiate between all these articles. So that's great. And also in terms of your literature review, if you have a good prompt, then you can create an amazing literature review overview with that as well. Um, and I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna paste the prompt that I created for this as an example and let it create a table. I specifically told Notebook LM to create a table, so it will create a table. And then I wanna show you like why it is so cool, especially compared to ChatGPT. So let's give it a minute because it analyzes now all the stuff that I uploaded. So it's gonna take a couple of seconds. I asked it to create a table because I wanted to get like specific parameters out of these literatures and I didn't want it to look for them myself, okay? So I just asked it to do that. So I asked it to give me the source, to analyze jet lengths, jet velocities, nozzle diameters, and Reynolds numbers. These are like some parameters that I need for my uh, research and to extract all that from, from, the, from the papers. So what it does is now it literally pulls out all the data. But the cool part is you see all these small numbers, right? So when you hover over them, you can see the exact location where it extracted that data from. So it, this is a text from the paper and from there it extracted that value from. So you can always check whether it's lying or not, whether it's making up some stuff or not, which is amazing. So everything is backed up by sources. Now, one thing that's important is you always have to save this. Like if you like the results, you have to save it to notes. And then on the right side, you can say how this note is saved. If you don't do that, all your progress will be lost. So it, it's not saving like ChatGPT the entire uh, chat. So you have to save that note and then it will be there. So another thing that I found super, super cool with this is, you know how like it's hard to keep up with literature in your research field and at some point you just don't want to keep reading and keep informing yourself so you just keep pushing that away so one cool thing is this um, deep dive conversation feature so you can click here on generate and what it does it it creates like an audio podcast with two people who discuss the topics that you uploaded here and this is amazing if you just want to briefly understand a paper like what it's about and also if you're new to the research topic it's not so good if you are looking 
for like specific details, then I would use the prompting technique as I did right here, right? But if you just, this is especially cool for if you just start with a literature review and you have no clue about your research area, then this audio overview, they really break it down with like good examples so you understand research so, so easily and what it's all about. But then obviously like if you want to like dive deep and understand everything in detail, obviously read it or use the prompting technique to understand better. But for a first overview, it's amazing and you can just, just pop it in, commute to college, go for a walk and just listen to it. It makes it so, so much easier and it takes a while to create it. So while this creates uh, on the side, we can look at some other features. Some other features, as you can see on the right side is you can create a study guide, a briefing document, timeline, FAQ. This is especially cool if you just want to test yourself on a specific topic, then you can create like the study guide, which will then ask you questions and kind of ask you, you know, kind of like a quiz uh, about that topic. And yeah, you can experiment with these things. But I think the most important part is really the prompts. And that's what we're going to talk now in the next uh, section, how to create good effective prompts. So first of all, when you create a prompt, think of like what format do you want your results to be? Do you want a table? Do you want a .csv file that you can download? Do you just want a text? What is it? And tell that, okay? Say like draft me, as I said here in the prompt, I said create a table. And I also said add one column per parameter and I also defined the columns that I needed and which parameters I was looking for. So the more detail you give your prompt, the better it will be. So think about the format, what information you want to get out there. These are the most important things. And then basically just let it draft itself. For initial document analysis, you can use one of these two prompts. You can either say create a literature review based on these articles. Uh, then you'll just get a brief literature review. It's a good starting point. You can look at it and then you can refine it, right? You can ask like follow up questions and say, okay, uh, now do this with the literature review or do that. Another prompt would be summarize the core message, the core research focus of these papers and main findings across the paper. So this would be like a great summary. And if you say create a table, then you'll have a table with a summary of what every paper is about, which is super useful. Now, if you want to do a bit more deeper analysis, you could ask things like, what are the two main challenges in this and that research area according to those papers? So then it will point out like, what are the challenges what do scientists like look at across these papers? Uh, what is the core challenge here? Which will then help you to find maybe a literature gap or, you know, these kind of things. Outline the methodological approaches used in this paper and identify main elements. Now, this is cool when you want to like set up an experimental analysis or a computational method and you just want to see like what other researchers do in that area, how do they conduct their experiments and how do they collect their data, right? So this is a great way to get like an overview. And if you always say create a table, then you get like a table overview overview of what all these researchers and all these papers did to get their data, which is super convenient. You can also ask it to be more critical. You can say like create a critical comparison of the theoretical frameworks used in these papers. So then it will compare all the theoretical frameworks in the papers and be like critical about it and compare them with one another. And that's also super useful. And finally, you could ask something like what theories are the sources using, which is also cool because then you see like what theories are uh, is the research based on. So this is a long way to say in very short you can ask it anything and you'll get great results from it because bridging it to the comparison to ChatGPT now it does not make things up like ChatGPT. Uh, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So for example in my experience I realized okay it's good in the sense of that it literally only uses the information from the sources that you uploaded but when you then have a question for example you don't understand a word or you don't understand a concept then it won't really be able to help you with that. So then it makes sense to use ChatGPT to ask things like, oh, what is this theory about? Or can you explain me how this thing works? Then ChatGPT is great because it uses um, information that is not in the paper to explain that stuff to you. With Notebook LM, if it's not in the paper, it won't be able to explain it to you. And then you, you know, you won't get answers to stuff that it doesn't know. So it's a good and a bad thing, but you can trust its result in the sense of that it's not hallucinating or um, extracting stuff from other sources. So that's great. And also ChatGPT has a pro version. It's not for free. The free version is quite limited. So Notebook LM is entirely for free. You can upload as many data, as many documents as you want. It's all for free. So obviously that's a very, very good thing. And 
Finally, I love this about Notebook LM is the thing that we looked at at the, in, um, at the beginning with the numbers. So you have the sources directly in the notes. So you can always check whether it's accurate or not and where it got this piece of information from, which ChatGPT doesn't do. So ChatGPT just gives you, gives you the uh, final results and then you just have to trust it, right? And we know that it makes stuff up sometimes. So um, in that sense, Notebook LM, quite reliable, but limited in its knowledge. And sometimes you have to like dig deeper using ChatGPT or Google while well, it's more trustworthy than ChatGPT and it's entirely for free. Now, one more side note before I end this video is if you are allowed to record your supervisor meetings, Notebook LM is great because you can then upload the MP3 file from your supervisor meeting and then you can say create like actionable items like what should I do next, create a summary of this meeting and the next step that I should do in my research and you know you don't have to like uh, during the meeting write notes or try to remember that stuff, you can just upload it and get a great overview uh, on Notebook LM as well. So this is like a feature on how you could use like the MP3 feature uh, of Notebook LM. All right, I hope you found this video useful. So these are all the features of Notebook LM. And I remember this comment was like, hey, you have to try Notebook LM. It's gonna change everything. It's the best tool ever, something like this. And I tried it and I agree. It's one of the tools I regularly use now because I can trust it. And as I said, it's for free and it's just does a good job overall. Uh, yeah, I know I recommend you to check it out yourself and get impressed yourself. Other than that, do make sure to check out my Instagram channel by scanning the QR code here because I share daily bite-sized piece academic tips there. And this YouTube channel is quite small. So if there is one thing I'll ask from you is to like, subscribe, share this YouTube channel to anyone that you think will profit from this. Uh, because the more you engage with this channel, the more it will grow and the better videos I can produce for you guys. And the least thing, okay, the least thing is leave a like. Okay, just a click, just, just like this video. You don't know how much this means to a small channel like this. It means the world because it needs to grow and it will grow with your help. So just maybe just like it if you like the video. And other than that, I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.